question. My Lords, we now come to the second oral question, Lord Kennedy of Sillock. Uh, my Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name of the order paper and doing so refer to my relevant interest as the Tathan Register. Lord Greenhouse. We will continue to challenge industry on inappropriate use of EWS1 forms. We have asked lenders to publish data so homeowners can see how the guidance is being applied, as well as the impact of the process on mortgage applications. Data from one major lender suggests that an EWS1 form already exists for 50% of mortgage applications where one is requested. We are working with industry to ensure this picture improves. Kennedy of Southwark. Uh, my Lords, um, the problem is that. Uh, Mortgage, mortgage providers are insisting on a form that is not necessary and against the guidance from the Royal Institution of Charter Surveyors. People can't sell their homes or from, because the actions of overzealous financial institutions and buyers can't get mortgages. So can the Noble Lord say more? Has he spoken to UK Finance to sort this issue out? Because sadly, this for me is another example of woeful failure by the government, all promise and no delivery. Again and again, home, owners, uh, home buyers have been, have been let down. Now, issues of fire safety, building safety, poor construction and financial failure are not going to go away. And the noble law will be brought back here again and again and again until the government actually takes some action finally. My Lords, we have had repeated engagement with both UK Finance and also the Building Societies Association on this matter. And we're seeing a picture that is uh, troublesome but is continuing to improve bit by bit. And we've taken a number of measures to ensure uh, that uh, we encourage lenders to take a more proportionate approach. As my noble friend, re friend read, uh, Inside Housing for April reporting that buildings are being issued with a succession of different EWS ratings after a sale has taken place. So how can inspectors sign off forms expressed to be valid for five years but change them later to the disadvantage of the purchaser? My noble friend raises an important issue around the inconsistency of the application of EWS1 forms uh, by uh, professionals. Uh, I point out that we're working with the British Standards Institution to produce a publicly available specification known as PAS 9980, which is a code of practice designed to ensure greater consistency in these assessments. What discussions has the Minister or his officials had with the Financial Conduct Authority regarding lenders' obligations to treat customers fairly in relation to cladding? And in particular, what steps has the government taken to ensure that leaseholders confronted with an adverse EWS1 rating emerging during the time of a, a fixed rate mortgage are able to roll over to a new fixed rate rather than being forced into a standard variable rate at the end of their fixed term. My Lords, I point out that the EWS1 form is not um, a safety certificate and it is also not a, a statutory or government document. It's been developed uh, together uh, by uh, the Royal, Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors together with uh, others. Um, but we continue to have uh, dialogue with uh, the banks um, and the building societies to ensure that they are, do, do act in a proportionate and sensible way uh, and obviously we continue to uh, raise issues from time to time as needed with the Financial Conduct Authority. The Noble Lord the Minister used lots of words. Oh, sorry, I declare an interest as a former councillor in Southwark. Um, really? you, <laughs> um, the Minister is using lots of words like challenging this and working with so and so and taking a number of measures but has the government actually made a simple statement saying to the mortgage companies or to finance companies that this is not necessary before giving money to people who want to move house my lords we've been working very hard to ensure that there's guidance to be very clear about when a, such a form is necessary uh, there are certain instances where it is deemed that there is a sufficient life safety risk that an EWS1 form is required. And the issue at hand is to ensure that lenders take a proportionate reproach, and that is best achieved through dialogue. My Lords, this whole issue is an appalling scandal affecting several million innocent victims. Developers, building owners and government are responsible, not them. But over 600,000 people in England are currently living in high-rise buildings with dangerous cladding and over 2 million mortgage prisoners unable to move because of cladding issues. Why is the government continuing to inflict massive distress and anxiety 
through the financially crippling costs of remediation works, which these leaseholders should not have to pay? Why is the government refusing to offer upfront lease funding for those uh, leaseholders and offset it from future recovery from those actually at fault? My Lords, I think we're straying a little bit away from the original question, which is around external wall uh, uh, systems and the need for a, uh, a certificate uh, to ensure that uh, uh, lenders do have the information they need uh, to, to lend on that. But I point out that, uh, as I said in answer to the previous question, 50% of those that um, make mortgage applications, that their EWS1 form is in place, and we continue to make a number of uh, measures and steps to make the, the provision of an EWS1 form easier. Lord Flake. Uh, my Lords, uh, ESW1 requirements have become an overreaction to the Grenfell Tower tragedy, particularly in applying these to multi-occupancy blocks uh, and uh, buildings below 18 metres. Fear of being sued has limited the number of required professional assessors available, um, and it has also limited the amount of insurance that the insurance industry is willing to insure uh, the, the professionals involved. Uh, it has uh, limited also financial obligations, willingness to lend, and has ultimately killed the market in leases. Will the government consider effectively getting yes, EWS 1 uh, reduced, its requirements reduced and rationalised, and will the government consider uh, providing insurance cover for the professionals involved? My noble friend, I would please know that we have announced our intention to um, provide uh, a scheme that enables the professionals that carry out EWS1 to have sufficient professional indemnity insurance cover, and we're also engaging with the building uh, societies associations uh, and the UK finance and the major banks so that they look at other forms, for instance, uh, an updated fire risk assessment or indeed um, uh, any buildings that were um, constructed after 2018, after Grenfell, um, that, uh, that they look at the sign-off from a, a building control inspector. But there are um, lenders that have led the way on this to take a more proportionate approach in not always requiring an EWS1 certificate. And there's Fox of Buckley. My Lord, you keep saying that updated guidance from the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors means that leaseholders shall no longer need a form to sell their homes, but they do. And you say that ES, EWS1 is not a government form or legal requirement, but law, mortgage lenders continue to insist on the form. So in the end, the only reason all this has happened is because of government policies. So when will the government take responsibility for the leaseholders trapped in homes they can't sell or remortgage? And then has the noble Lord uh, Minister noticed the media are now running with this story because of grassroots cladding and leaseholders groups? There's huge public interest. Beyond Inside Housing, we've had Radio 4 and Channel 4, all sorts of newspapers. We've even had Rebecca Long-Bailey on GB News. Sorry, you get the gist. You've got a problem. Now, my Lords, we recognise that there's a problem, and we're taking the steps uh, required to ensure that where a ws one form is requested, that it's easier to get the professional to carry it out, but also encouraging the banks to look at other documentation that, um, as, as an alternative, as a proxy, to show that the buildings are safe. It is important that we do go ahead, identify those buildings that require their external wall systems to be remediated. Um, in November of last year, the government issued uh, a statement would recognise that the number of qualified fire engineers to provide these certificates of 300 people was woefully inadequate. And it said that it would provide finance for funding for 2,000 further qualified people within six months and ensure that there was adequate sources of professional indemnity insurance. Will the noble Lord, the Minister, say how many additional people have been funded by the government to provide the certificate required? And could he say uh, precisely what further insurance uh, has now been made available or will be made available in the market or elsewhere for these other people? Um, that's quite right, um, my lords. We've made a commitment for a £100,000 funding scheme to train up to 2,000 surveyors. That has already begun, uh, and I'll, I'll write to the noble lord with the precise figure that have been trained 
uh, at, up to this point. Um, but we also have announced a bespoke insurance model to ensure that the, um, the professionals have access to professional indemnity insurance uh, cover, and details of that will be published uh, in due course. Mr Thornhill. Um, Minister, at the, the, at the heart of, of this is, is, a, is a very simple question, which I don't actually believe that you've answered. Um, what action does the government intend to take in the event that mortgage lenders continue to insist on this form being obtained for buildings that don't actually need one, according to the RICS criteria, with sellers finding themselves in a classic catch-22 situation? My Lords, we recognise that there may still be an outstanding problem and where the building is outside the scope of the RICS guidelines and lenders are still insuring, uh, in insisting on that, we ask that they take that up with RICS in the first instance. But I point out that 80% of lenders have adopted the RICS guidance formally and so there's very much a choice for market uh, to, to people that are purchasing properties to go to lenders that will follow that guidance.